we'll wait for a couple of minutes. Hello. I'm going to Hello. So good evening everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Thai Talks after a long break of a couple of years. So SAI, as many of you might know, is an initiative that was started by students and postdocs at ICTS a few years ago. And this was done with the broad aim of having a vibrant discussion within the ICTS community of issues of social awareness and related to science and technology, society, arts, humanities, and so on. So it's, it's really a broad aim and to, to, to really get together people from ICTS and to have various discussions on these socially relevant issues. So that's just a broad introduction to SAI. And so uh, we're restarting again. So with, with uh, Tamil Mani M, who is from the Ambedkar Periyar Fule Study Circle in IIT Bombay, he'll tell us more about what it is uh, in his slide. So I won't, I won't belabor the point. So he'll be talking to us today on applied casteism in higher education spaces from Maniket to Darshan. So I hand it over to him. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Hi, uh, I am Tamil Mani M. I'm a PhD student in mechanical engineering from IIT Bombay. I belong to Ambedkar Periyar Fule Study Circle, which is a voluntary student organization. So the APPSC at IIT Bombay was started in May 2015. In 2014, there was an institutional murder of Anike Tambore, a B.Tech electrical student committed suicide. Uh, after which some of the students voluntarily gathered together and they found there is a lot of caste discrimination involved in pushing Anike Tambore to this end. And they grouped together to form such an initiative in 2015, which is named to be Ambedkar Periya Fully Study Circle. <clears throat> so after 2015, we started, we started with the very question of caste and various other social hierarchies, how they play a role in higher education spaces, especially with regards to IIT Bombay. And then we took this question seriously in the campus whenever any such activity or initiative happens. One such, we conducted a panel discussion on missing women, which led to a lot of question of why there are not enough women in STEM, especially in IIT Bombay, there is not enough engineering graduates, undergraduates, in the so and also not any good any any uh, uh, establishment of posh guidelines in the workplace. So we made sure a general cell could be initiated and working in IIT Bombay around 2016-17. Then later on, we also take up the questions of inaccessibility on all fronts. One such as PI question, where public education centers like IITs are constantly being pushed to increase fees to the limit uh, on par with private in universities or education centers, where it clearly pushes many of the marginalized students from the country to not even dream of such spaces of higher education. And we conducted a month-long protest in 
17, which again happened in 22 as well, where IIT Bombay tried to increase the fees again, where we uh, again came and protested to try to reduce the fee. And in addition, we also took up various other questions, be it uh, any other national uh, issues, political issues with regards to, and the major goal was to make the campus and the, any other academic space inclusive and democratic where all the voices can be openly debated and talked about. This is a very brief introduction about us. Let me go into the question today of uh, applied casteism in the higher education spaces. Although I have put clearly most of the higher education spaces, my talk will be most very specifically regarding the IIT Bombay, which I come from, and some more information and insights that I got to know with all other IITs in addition to IIT Bombay. So in that regards, I will talk about the general idea of casteism, how we know in society, how it works, how it morphs or how it functions inside higher education spaces or how it behaves or how it tries to portray itself as something else. So in that way, applied casteism, how it works. And maybe at the end, uh, we'll also touch upon how these uh, important insights that we get on applied casteism may play a lot of role in what Anike Tambore, which I mentioned to Darshan Solanki, who recently suicided in February 2023 in IIT Bombay, who's also a BTEC first year student coming from a scheduled caste background. So what all the struggles he faced and how to correlate with all the casteism in campus, what all lead to the such uh, drastic events in most of the higher education institutions. And then I'll conclude in some level also we can interact at that time about if this is applied casteism, what could be our applied anti-casteism is and what can we do? Is there any way hope for it? So <clears throat> there are three sections I'll be talking about applied casteism. When I say how casteism functions inside higher education spaces, two, three important roles it plays. One of the major role, especially in IIT Bombay, it performs is a, putting a debate of reservation of on based on caste as which is completely opposed to merit, which is not, but you often you always uh, see the debate of preservation put against merit and why that happens, what that happens, let's go to it. I am citing one of the SEST students in is an uh, organization institute body at IIT Bombay. They conducted a survey recently with all other, all the SEST students in the campus which amount to around 2,300, out of which 20% at least replied to the survey. Based on that sample size, we have got the various data and the data have not yet been publicly made. This has been leaked to media by someone and they have published this recently last week. So those data I'm citing here. Some of the major components, one of the thing is one in three students, every SEST student in the campus were asked JE ranks to know what their caste identity is. So, I'm not aware of, how do you know caste identity? Huh. So, so JE is an entrance exam to get into IIT. So based on your rank, they also get to know if you are in certain rank number, you may have been gotten to through SC category because there is a difference cut off for general SEST and based on that, they'll try to know or even the notion of trying to know the caste identity is through JE. That is one severe, we'll go next. But first, it's this. And this is one of the testimonial of some person who wrote that uh, 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 survey as well. I have seen many of my friends sharing casteist memes posts on social media and WhatsApp, including content against reservation. Some of my friends have openly said that they feel reserve category students was waste taxpayers' money. Such remarks in the open are very discomforting. So majorly this idea to put reservation always against, or especially the caste-based reservation always against the merit has works inside IIT Bombay in two, play, two ways. First is to belittle, humiliate the entire marginalized students who come through reservation inside the campus. But there is one more other also happening continuously which I will show the data in the next slide, which is they don't also implement mandated reservation norms in all the posts, especially faculty recruitment, postdoc, and PhD admissions. 
and uh, this thereby also they claim always those students don't have enough merit so this always plays the role in order to like delegitimate reservation which has completely different role to play in the campus or in the entire society they inside iit bombay or many other higher education spaces always pitch this against uh, merit thereby they get keep uh, not allow people inside even after people allow they get humiliated and lot of dropouts happen and some suicides also happen how do they gate keep and not follow mandated reservation so far we have found they are using this important weapon with the miss interview so this is our rta data which we got we have filed rta for all the 23 iits and iims as well this is with specific to iit bombay all departments 15 to 19 across 10 semesters across all 20 odd departments Uh, while the mandated reservation norms is 27 percent in OBC, they have only filled 19. And if you see ST category, which is very bad in condition, and SC category, they have filled only half of the mandated norms. So what they usually do is, and we also didn't get just the selected data. We also got applied, written interview, written test, then interview, then, and we clearly see a pattern always after the in written test. whoever how many ever people like if the necessary number of seats is enough almost 5 to 10 times people go through the interview process while the same amount of ratio goes through general category as well but almost and always all the general category seats have been filled and almost and always scst obc category seats have been left empty almost 11 departments did not have a single st student for a past what all these five years and 10 semesters of data so <clears throat> this is in one way how i feel pitching against reservation and merit and also claiming that those people don't have merit and use the interview as a process if that interview is so fair and transparent if they really don't behave believe uh, like properly perform themselves why are you here coming and telling it how do you know if someone performs well in interview the process has to be transparent and you have to go through to check these rta data we got is about the results how many numbers only and we also asked in some departments and asked how they conduct interviews and can you give the interview results marks and they clearly specify that we don't we don't actually maintain those marks as soon as the interview process gets over we'll just throw it away and these are such some of the answers we got in rta and many other places the rta is simply denies not available so they also even though they are very much applying their caste idea into the place there is a caste bias shown in the data by showing not enough data by making the process very opaque they are also making sure we can't anyway try to clearly prove the open caste bias existing in the interview processes at iit bombay so in addition to that let's talk about the students who have already come into the campus let's see they are in the campus and they are facing some more other than just merit versus reservation one in four scst students were asked their caste surname explicitly this is one of the data and uh, so there is as i put it out merit versus reservation there is one more thing also always come into a debate as if caste based reservation is the one which always try to keep or hold the caste system in the country which is one of the very uh, naive and very stupid argument we constantly uh, hear from people who talk against reservation and somehow and somehow general category students lose their caste as soon as they get into the general category so this castelessness people this casteless general category people are the same people who keep asking one in four scst students their caste surname so this is a very peculiar idea that they keep following so they don't just invisibilize caste just by saying oh we are not seeing caste you are the ones who avail caste based reservation and look at caste there are structural systemic issues where caste is and especially caste struggles of marginalized students are keep on invisibilized this is an 
calendar like diary iit bombay diary which regularly publishes every 3 months this is the iitb diary for the last 3 months january to march 2023 in which obituary had only 1% bed in the last 3 months while the entire campus for the past one and a half month has been tremendously angst and very much outraged at the death of a first year student his name didn't even find place in the entire iitb diary so this is also one way they invisibilize caste and the caste struggles while they say caste is a thing we don't see we don't see sometimes the people who go through caste struggles are also always erased so that this place becomes casteless thus invisibility means non existence of caste just by making them invisible just by seeing after decades maybe after 20 30 years maybe later you go and check the iitb diary at 2023 you may know that through newspaper darshan solanki died and lot of the parents and relatives keep constantly pointing that he has been facing caste discrimination and you see that iit bombay diary it didn't even remember such a student studied in their campus are they trying to invisibilize and therefore try to prove that there is never an existence of caste system so this is one of the testimonial given i feel somewhere it is some kind of invisible way of recognition where nobody explicitly mentions about caste but creates an invisible boundary or tag how do they perform this invisible boundary or tag in i have, i have not shown all the survey results because i don't have the data it is very partly has been put out in uh, media many of the data has been clearly showing how these invisible tags often work in a way to dissociate from the marginalized students isolate them and make them aloof not participate not go as a community as an academic unit inside a space where you not only come to learn in the classroom but also as a grow as a person which is being denied constantly using these tags and boundaries okay there is one important other next survey result which points one in five students feared faculty backlash to talk about caste discrimination oh students are naive students are ignorant students are stupid they may do caste discrimination they don't know they are new students why do we have to worry about faculty because faculty are there to support the students whoever it may be then why this data is showing this stark reason so what about the faculty at iit bombay how do they behave so these two three incidences i have been i am quoting uh, through various times this has happened if you know first seema singh professor at iit karakpur which became a national issue in, in the lockdown time when the online classes started where specific scst students always go through a pre class before they enter into bachelors they were given certain extra classes to adequate themselves seema singh one of the professor in one of those classes to all the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe students there where she openly outrightly abuse scst students using caste slurs their parents and everyone without any remorse or without any uh, hope for legal uh, repercussion to her and this is one of the important instance which had a huge national uproar because this is a zoom class or google meet class it is recorded the parents of the marginalized students are watching it that recording has been put out viral everywhere in social media every student every person started outraging out of it national media and even politicians took it big uh thing about it and i don't think she has been suspended from the position yet but uh, what then happened is we have been constantly you doing the rta work even before this incident happened both phd and faculty at that time also as an organization we complained against we also try to complain regarding seema singh issue with addition to rta data of not enough marginalized community faculty existing in any of these iits being one of the important reason 
where we tried to push again and again, please recruit more marginalized community faculty or faculty who are more sensitized on caste issues and gender issues. So after which mission mode recruitment as an idea was pushed from the MOE on all IITs. I will come to that in a bit next. And Vasanta Kandasamy, Professor Vasanta Kandasamy is a professor at IIT Madras, retired now. She is one of the professor who succumbed to a lot of caste-based discrimination in her department by the fellow faculty and all the faculty where she has been clearly not allowed to be promoted to HOD, even having enormous potential and capability to be one. And for that, and she, they have appointed someone else who has lesser publications, lesser uh, experience, lesser qualification than her, for which she actually complained in a, went on to file a court case, which went for years till she even retires. The IIT made sure they, she won the case and she was got some remedy in form of money, arrears and everything. But they made sure that temple of IIT or the HOD, the place, the premium position of IIT's temple was never breached or never been allowed to be had by a Dalit woman who had more than enough qualifications. And Professor Vipin Vitil is a, one of the OBC professor at IIT Madras who joined in two years recently. And as soon as he joins, he was casteistly discriminated by fellow faculty and, uh, and the people in the uh, campus, after which he complained openly in public media and then he left the campus as well. So if this is the scenario where we see casteist professors on viral videos where professors marginalized backgrounds coming from faculty, they themselves are witnessing a lot of caste discrimination. What is the faculty composition then? What are they? Why do they behave like this? This is the IIT Bombay RTA data from 2000, very long back till 2022. And this is the <coughs> composition till now. So this was one of the major data we pointed out in our letter to MOE and NCSE and CST also well, with relation to SC Massing case and we argued and we tried to please fill all these seeds. Ha make sure those seeds being filled at priority and even in the same way how I uh, talked about it in PhD admission, faculty recruitment always don't actually have any written test as far as I know, and most of them run on interviews and most of the interviews have been uh, shows clear caste bias based on their outcome. And after the MMR, mission mode recruitment has been put forward by MOE, the clause of the mission mode recruitment is very simple. You have a clear cut vacancies and like, like you are running without enough faculty with a large crowd of students, almost 15,000 students are studying in IIT Bombay with very less number of faculty to help and coordinate, you please fill those seats was one of the class and mission mode recruitment asked to fill those OBC, SCST faculty positions which are vacant. And after which the mission mode recruitment was passed. And if you can see clearly if the 50% was the mandated norm around 50.5, 59.5 was the mandated reservation norms. You can clearly see if 323 general category students have professors has to be there, you must at least have 300 SCST OBC faculties to be present. And you have enough huge number of 150, 300, 600, almost 600 vacancies in SCST OBC faculty positions, for which they only opened 77 vacancies in the MMR, for which they got enough eligible applications, almost in 2000s and they could take only 31. And this is the data in 2022 end uh, where the selected list have been found. So why higher education or with respects very clearly IIT Bombay with my data and IITs in general behave that way? And what is this IIT brand? Whenever we keep bringing our caste issues or any issues, we, one of the major uh, remarks or uh, argument we always don't malign the name of IIT please you have issues take it up that has nothing to do with IIT 
don't talk it in public or in media about associating so that the brand value of iit goes down how is this brand value even been built first i want to question that and i want to is the brand value even been real brand value or is it inflated to hold and always say i've got these caste norms and caste practices without being exposed to the public you always clearly know the funding disparity between iits and nits and every other central education institutions compared to state universities you always clearly say they perform well that's why and they are institution of excellence and eminence they have been awarded more in terms of funding and everything if that is the case then what is the criteria of their performance how do they evaluate it and when constantly and recently every now and then we keep hearing from western universities european universities talking about diversity being one of the important and major clause which also helps many of the indian students to get through that diversity class to get a seat there get uh, an opportunity there how come the same uh, uh, extraordinary universities can boast their diversity as an important brand value while iit is constantly which always and almost forget and don't clearly follow the diversity norms through caste based caste based discrimination and not enough filling reservation seats how are they even topping the rankings how do they even rank these universities and iits is their brand really true or inflated one of we also uh, recently in 2022 they have released an air of rankings where iit madras top that i guess most of the iits were in the top 10 and list we also looked at what do they actually we got rta and we tried to what are their uh, uh, criteria and what they qualify so they had an important parameter which gives 10 percentage of the ranking marks to social inclusion and they have social inclusion calculated based on four major factors i will tell a few of them most important one of them is caste i will come to that other than the caste they also uh, mark two three important parameters one being diversity how diversity how diverse the institution is what is the marker for diversity according to them important marker for diversity and social inclusion is different languages it's not caste based is caste although they know indian society is every state has been important social marker where it is caste that is not been taken as an important diversity measure but language has been taken and which clearly shows a bias this will always favor iits compared to state universities and this is a clear cut biased factor they have kept in to promote and give more ranking to nirf even though any other state universities could be could perform a lot better in many other aspect this is one of the factor created to bias and give more bias towards iits and some way to nits as well and second diversity factor with regards to women they why do they actually have to uh, when they when they reapply the 2022 nir of ranking i thought they are just evaluating again no they didn't just evaluate the same formula again they tweak the formula compared to 2017 in order to make the ranking better for them also one such important factor is with regards to women earlier earlier uh, factor to calculate the percentage inclusion of women in the social inclusion there was 50% of students was one of the criteria and at least i'm sorry 50% in faculty and at least 2% or two or more senior administrative positions were there and they know always clearly know that none of the faculty senior administration positions are given to women and the data is clearly showing that they are at wrong what they should have done over the five years is to give more opportunities to women instead in 2022 they removed that factor from the formula so is it really branded or inflated third one educationally and socially backward classes they have given a 10% like 1 by 4 1 by 4 to all these four so this this takes 25% of the 10% marks given to this 
and in that how do they how did they calculate in 2017 was they actually calculate based on how many students in the campus in ug and pg were getting scholarships obviously most of the all the almost all of the scholarships have been given specific to scst students and some to obc through other state scholarships and everything so this was the one of the major uh, criteria number of students divided by 50 because 50% was supposed to be these marginalized community students was the and somehow multiply that into some factor 25 was that factor to calculate the formula in 2017 and 2022 somehow they thought it is very direct and straight forward and we are not actually taking more scst students then it is putting us down they just removed it and made it a function of esc we asked for that function please give it to us we will also calculate and see how it functions that is what take that's not published anywhere so yeah maybe they are actually branded hello yeah when you can i uh, can you just tell who is they when you say who is can i ask national institute of rankings foundation is the one who is doing this ranking so they are removing these factors yeah they are the ones who have been clearly doing this and why do they have to re remove these factors especially which shows by certain flaws in your systems which could help the institutes to like change themselves why do you have to remove that to uh, hide those problems if there is a problem take it make sure it uh, has been yeah. but are you also sort of insinuating that these iits and all have some control over nii i'm not sure i'm not sure i'm not sure but uh, sufficiently to say that when you have specific uh, diversity factor on that favors more iits than state universities why do you have to do that if you are fair and open ranking that could rank entire national universities on fair basis then why do you have a parameter there that supports and that that will be biased to some person so there is another uh, brand image in the curious case of iit delhi with regards i'll talk about this in a little bit i i i hope you know i'm not sure supernumerary seats have been introduced in iit je exams because they found there is as i said lot of not enough women are there in the je uh, undergrad programs lack of women are very visible so in order to promote that what they did is they increase the number of seats by 20% and allot them only as a women seats that is 20% supernumerary so exact uh, 120 seats have been increased to 140 and the remaining extra seats have been given to only women and in which iit delhi general cell proposes and talked in clear terms how this is very much uh, important and how the idea of merit does not only be taken in line with iit b je rank how come women even though they may have lesser je rank or not they come from a socially very uh, socially backward to place in the indian society as it is because women has to go through a lot more other struggles than a man which sounds so good and amazing when iit delhi itself says and for the same earlier data i showed faculty are not missing so moe before doing mmr they asked a committee to look through it why faculty is very less try to improve it what can we do about it so they set up a committee to investigate it and it was headed by ram gopal rao which was an iit delhi director now he is ex director he was heading the committee and all the conclusions they were given was somehow asking the reservation to be placed put in place is undermining the merit and brand of the iit and the conclusion is to exempt iits and nits to stop implementing reservation so this is very curious when iit delhi certain wing somehow praises the merit uh, praises the reservation in when it is applied in supernumerary seats for women as opposed to when it is asked for scst obc faculty positions somehow it is completely De demolishing their brand image of the entire or the quality of iit faculty somehow so yeah how did it all these structural issues or some some different data correlations my own personal opinions 
how did it play a role and what all happened with regards to aniketa umbore which happened long back 2014 i'll talk a lot more on darshan solanki issue some 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 insights we can get i hope with regards to how a space it is and what it did to two people so aniketa umbore in his third year of btech he told his parents that i want to write je again in general category i'm just going to read it and you just introspect so this is darshan sister after his death in media she said when he was filing a scholarship form their behavior this roommates and friends behavior changed towards him they would say that this guy belongs to sc why should we talk to him he's from a lower caste they have been explicitly calling darshan as dalit aya dalit aya whenever he comes to a group or whenever he comes to sit with them to talk or discuss or group studies darshan's mother told it in media as well roommate would not help darshan with queries of laptop or with the studies after he got to know darshan's je rank whenever darshan would be asked by his family about his roommate let it be let it be darshan's aunt told this when he came to visit them for a festival during january just a month ago or something like that why are you studying for free while we have to pay was always asked by some of his friends and they have stopped talking to him after they know about the it's an internal committee internal investigation committee set up by iit bombay faculty themselves to investigate the case what happened they investigated everyone in their wing friends and faculty possibly and we also from apsc side we submitted our deposition and in one of in their report it was written their darshan's friend told that darshan is always sensitive to his caste he came to know from one of his friends that darshan told this to him that he was always big in his ga in his home but when he comes he doesn't feel any value to him this is last two three days before it came in media that one of the just two three days before february around 7th or something like that before in our instagram chat some student one of whom darshan was studying asked that about his iit je rank once he told that he would not have got an admission in the general category and darshan also mentioned clearly that he might probably also not like darshan anymore so despite all that media itself told us and from friends family we came to know that internal committee report clearly said that there was no specific instance of caste based discrimination in the case of darshan solanki sit which is investigating currently still they are still not uh, they are yet to say anything about the caste discrimination angle how 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 is it important for as a as a space I, i told you already also how it is necessary for them to also always invisibilize caste that's how the brand has been managed if they could have told openly there was some caste based discrimination we want to take some steps to contain it it could have i i didn't i can't understand how that changes or how that reduces the brand image or anyway but this is what has been concluded at then if this is all the ways by invisibilizing the caste by putting always caste as some factor against the merit caste as somehow not been helped or not been taken like uh, like hindering the brand value of any higher education institution if this is the way casteism is functioning inside higher education spaces in certain uh, specific to iit bombay and few other iits i i got information about how to function how what what can we do if applied anti casteism is some way what are the ways in we can apply our anti caste principles and what are the measures we can take some of the demands i will talk here but i will also open after that to some questions some interaction maybe these are very specific uh, ishaka guidelines is very important for sexual harassment and sexual uh, uh, 
prevention of sexual harassment in workplace. Uh, Vishaka guidelines was very important in uh, establishing those rules in the country. Like that, we don't have any such guidelines other than Prevention of Atrocity Act, which uh, atrocity acts against SCSTs in society, there will be a Prevention of Atrocity against Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Rapes Act is there. Other than that, with specific to higher education spaces or any other educational area, what are the guidelines or any workplace? What are the guidelines for caste-based discrimination? If caste-based harassment has been happening, what are the guidelines based on which these cases has been taken up? So far, nothing as such is in place in this country. So Rohit Hat, Rohit Vimla, there was an institutional murder in 2016 in HCU. After Rohit Vimla, there was a huge social movement uh, after it. One of the uh, social movement produced was a Rohit Hat. They have been, people who have been involved in those movement have worked on a draft to provide such guidelines for caste-based discrimination. Our demand next in forward and for always is to make sure that guidelines been passed in the this country as an act and that it governs every educational institution and workplace to have appropriate behavior on caste sensitivity and if caste based harassment happens that has to be dealt according to these guidelines is one of our uh, major demand and for that we are working on a PIL also. Uh, so with regards to PhD data and everything I have shown clearly, the reservations has not been mandated. That has to be mandated and followed in faculty PhD and postdoc positions. Even if interview is in place, that has to be given lesser weightage compared to the written because it can cause a lot of bias, which has been openly visible. And even if it is not biased enough, that has to be put into oh, transparently where an external member can be present in the committee panel or it can be recorded for any uh, time to keep it. If any certain uh, time anyone feels that he has been discriminated during a symmetry process, he can go through the uh, video and can establish that there was a bias and not. And roster system has to be implemented in faculty because as I told you, almost 90% of the faculty already been filled by general category students. If you have to start implementing like recruitment now, you have to still recruit SCST OBC faculty for next 10 years at least in order to fill those vacancies. So there is no guideline for recruitment while every other central university, uh, central government positions or state government positions always have roster system to implement, uh, recruit people in every post. IIT always follow flexi cadre position where they don't follow this roster which is also one way they avoid following reservation norms is what we see. So if this is the theory we would go about where Ambedkar clearly say, if in order to uh, annihilate caste, if I don't want caste in my society, I have to have a society that's based on equality, liberty and fraternity. If this is the theory on based on what anti-casteism, anti-caste struggles are always move about, how is it? How are we going to apply this when such questions of merit versus reservation comes? When such questions of always caste struggles of marginalized students are being uh, invisibilized? How to, how to implement this equality, liberty and fraternity ideals in applications of such spaces? What is it with regards to equity and equality when it comes to EWS, where it clearly says in the constitution about educational and socially backward social classes has to be given and economic class has been introduced in order to undermine this entire social class. How does it play in relation with equity and equality? I just want to put it out to you in an open discussion about these things. Let's discuss about what do you think? I, if I have to ask one question to start with, I think, what do you think about this? Anti-reservation caste practice. I just, I, I'm almost done. I'm last two, three slides, but mostly all our questions only. Can we interact or is it only a talk? And what do you think? It's being anti-reservation is talking against students come from reserve category. Is it casteist? If so, why? The father gets a reservation, the son gets a reservation, the grandson gets a reservation. 
person going so that person who does not visit the reservation will be called there gets a chance so opening so, salary so so the idea of reservation anti reservation is not because it, they don't have any problem with schedule caste themselves who are availing they have a problem because schedule caste are availing other schedule caste positions not their positions so why 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 is there a reservation i just want to put this into discussion just just to generally talk about this no you clearly said anti reservation is not caste is because it doesn't talk about specific caste alone it's talking about the problem that reservation has been used by generations by someone ha 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 yeah yeah i i i understand i understand so if that is the case can reservation be used by generations after generation why is it in place after generation to generation so the basic argument yeah so the basic argument is statistical basic argument. hello hello can you hear me yeah. the basic argument is statistical so as long as the total number the pop, the population um you know the ratio of people in the entire population is not the same as the ratio of people in the space that we are talking about in this case educational uh, institutions then to equalize we need to keep doing the same affirmative action and that may be generational it doesn't matter as long as the total population is not i mean the proportion of people in the population is not equalized to the uh, proportion of people in that space we need to keep having that you know affirmative positive push so 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 we let's say we have a certain number of people um, in the society who are coming from a certain community but the number of the same number of people the same community people represented in a certain institution is much less that's why we have the reservation in the first place until and unless these two numbers are equal in the two spaces which is the population and the educational space we need to keep having the reservation it's as simple as that it doesn't matter whether it's generational as long as we don't have the equality in each space we need to keep having the reservation yes and and it's okay for another reason and i'll give the second reason here the the discrimination that people face generationally even the third and fourth generation people is based on caste whether they have the economic uh, sure. liberty or not whether they have whether their parents have got the uh, uh, the opportunity in their educational spaces or not a third generation student from a uh, sst 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 obesity community can still face caste based discrimination and that discrimination is caste but don't you think that he has received his chance no it, i mean so, the statistical argument i've so let's put it argument. one one question before we even talk about what is anti reservation let's put a question in this way i last this question in this way is reservation implemented to ensure diversity in any space or reservation given to people who need help i see i this direct answer to this question is anti reservation all most people who are anti reservation are all upper caste so it definitely looks as if it's a caste it is caste to some extent but also i think the point is that the upper caste don't realize the kind of disadvantage somebody from the uh, raised in a dalit family faces it's not just money it's the, it's a lot of things including self confidence and so on i think the upper caste don't realize that so Yeah. Call it caste, just call it whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think that. Yeah, yeah. No, why I am asking this question is these are the very important questions every day, today, life. Marginalized students coming into higher education space face. They are being asked these questions. Always asked. Your father is this. Your father also used this. You are rich. You have this phone. They may also have the same phone. They just don't think they can have it. But because you have used the reservation, you can't have it because it is there to help you somehow. from somewhere low level which has been given by whom 
by whom the society themselves which has put them at higher place by having this and play give me bringing them together and having them together in a same place equalizes them never comes to them in the mind that they are equalized they are still somehow lower because they are using reservation over generations so that's why i i am i am trying to put it anti reservation as caste is it's not caste is it's it's not here to uh, only talk about caste anti reservation reservation is always as i told in the earlier always talked against merit also i will also come to that as the question so i i touched upon the point in uh, in regards to western countries as well earlier in my debate can you think where, is there any point in our history of india that only a top university in our country will be applauded when they have enough scst faculty scst students scst postdoc scst phd positions completely filled and they are performing to the best will that come to be the merit of an institution ever or is such a idea itself wrong and why why failing the diversity is unmeritorious failing which failing to establish reservation in a space is a unfair space when you are sitting in a space without enough diverse group which the society you live in has that clearly shows that your space has disadvantaged some people to get inside when you are sitting in a classroom with some people and you can clearly see that some people are not enough there so they have been put outside or in excess in made in excess suitable to the space because the space is unfair are we having that idea when when we start looking at institutions looking at spaces like iit bombay when i say some place they are never having they have 600 general category faculty and have around 20 scst obc faculty do you see that iit bombay is a bad space do you think iit bombay is a bad space is it unfair space so i just want to <laughs> introspect on this line because these questions are constantly being put against marginalized students when they are stepped in you are unmeritorious you are using others place which would have helped some poor person but not you even though you are from the same social background even though in the society i am going to look you not as the equal but somehow you are not fit to be here so this is one of the question i want to ask because our anti casteism our rules of equality and liberty has to help us navigate these rules these questions if that is the case is it just a right of every marginalized student is it not reservation just a right of every marginalized student in this country whoever whatsoever wheresoever feels they can use it to occupy the space given to them constitutionally that they could come and represent their community there failing to do so it may not be properly represented so and how to establish such things in higher education spaces when i say law legal terms when i say guidelines this is always a one way there is a prevention of scheduled caste atrocity acts in country and still caste atrocities keep happening in the country so the guidelines is one way guidelines alone guidelines rohit act or any other caste harassment guidelines alone cannot change the space suddenly into a beautiful space what we need in line with it is also a vigilant student movement a student groups or student themselves always actively engaging in questioning and introspecting themselves such movements one of the movement is what i told rohit vimla movement which has come about bringing this rohit act possible through our efforts we are trying to bring a course on caste in campus to sensitize every student in iit bombay which we are trying to push push as much as possible so such courses never been in place in even western countries to talk about course with regards to educational spaces so that is one so a regular student active movement is always possible always needed and and that cannot also separately independently act 
uh, uh, like work on its own without any relation to the society because just because we come into a higher learning spaces higher education spaces we constantly think somehow also this is somewhere away and far off in a huge higher plane very much lesser affected by the which is not true even a smaller uh, hindrance there or interference there will cause some problems here so it should always be in line with anti caste movements constantly happening outside also where constant questions on caste and how do they play a role in people's lives are being taken up by the people themselves and uh, questioned and recent there was there are movements caste atrocity happened in gujarat pune over dalits themselves marched against that where dalits were flogged against refusing we can't take the dead carcass of animals anymore we are we are well off. we have dignity in place so as such movements come about in the society we personally inside higher education spaces we may not be asked to take dead carcasses inside the campus but we may still also feel very in different ways isolation uh, uh, aloofness and always being sidelined through the question of caste where we have to take those movements in line with ourselves and actively engage in student movements so thank you this is ambedkar periyar phule study circles contact there is this blog caste on campus.wordpress.com where you can access our all the rta data we have told about we are putting it out in public there uh, we are constantly working on more and more rta data specific to iit bombay but also to iim cei all institutes as well so thank you any other questions thank the speaker once again uh, so we'll open for questions uh, he had a question yeah, i come to you yeah uh, regarding this case that you just talked about this darshan's case in iit bombay and that the committee declared that it, it had nothing to do with caste they didn't say only that they also finalized and concluded that somehow academic performance was the reason for his i see so their yeah. conclusion was, and there are some separate uh, conclusions also that that is coming up in instagram in chat and what uh, i want to ask like what what is the step now one should take i'm not sure from which standing but like as students of iit bombay maybe or something that against this committee maybe because we uh, need reform right in yes see, and what reform are... has to come from change in some at some ad administrative level also so what do you think is a is a, no, the, is the, a way to do that? the very beginning as i told you already from the beginning is acknowledge the struggle the students go through just accept there are problems when you are even not acknowledging the problem you are never going to start even taking the step towards the right we have put forward already i didn't tell the personal journey and other journeys of appsc because there was a topic and i have to go through it that's why i didn't tell you this but personally i could tell you with regards to darshan solanki case before that appsc personally was working with schedule caste and schedule tribe students self for 8 9 months constantly pushing them to make reforms one of which how because how only the survey was even conducted and after we got the survey even in that this was happened in june 2022 when darshan even did not enter the campus so even by then there was an open house conducted where all the students came and they openly told about these things in public are we are facing these my friends are telling this do something help us with these these solutions have a separate mentorship program where scst seniors are our mentors while our mentors are also general category they are also harassing us when we say about our ranks so have this in place if there is a student coming to you to complain have a clear cut approach how to punish and what to do implement those guidelines there is a promotion of equity in higher education institutions act 2012 which is ugc guidelines i think even tifr may come under ugc i am not sure if that has to has been already put out in public to follow for every institution but that's not been put out according to that there has to be an anti discriminatory officer who has to be appointed by every institution who has to take care of these cases or any case that comes to them by every student who faces discrimination so those kind of guidelines we were asking them what they were doing was lethargic they said are what is happening nothing na let's take some time let's take some time in the november month 
we had a specific meeting with the scst cell where we have been clearly asked don't ask for more reforms for quite some time we are we don't want this is affecting our image this is affecting us one more thing i incident specific priority bombay when i talk about faculty i didn't i forgot to tell you us the survey was also including mental health issues they are facing through caste harassment so this was done in uh, relation with scst cell and student wellness center which is mental health counseling center in the iit bombay and after we conducted the survey the students scst students saw that it is also in relation with swc they have met swc head counselor multiple times and have faced caste issues remarks from her itself so they said we will not even write the survey because you are employed that after which we came to know that she is caste is we went and complained against her in the director no action has been taken we proceeded and further complaint in ncsc ncst there is an ongoing investigation against her they have asked they have recommended director to suspend her they have recommended director to uh, take her down from the head position not just that even file an fir against her in po po act but none of that has been done i'm not saying now we have been doing that in june july pehle till darshan died they didn't do this when darshan incident happened was not just because darshan went through this we know even before darshan go through this students go through this we know there is a structural systemic issue that allows these students to go through it help them what you can do one is help the people after they go through it also sensitize general students about what is appropriate behavior in the campus that also we asked them to do no baat mein dekh it was lethargy and apathy was always our problem that is when when this came to us we already know what has to be done what should have been done earlier long back so right now what we ask is of acknowledge there is a problem with regards to darshan's case there is a caste discrimination element with in our everyone every other marginalized student who is facing work on both ways help them also sensitize the community also general students faculty recruit more counselors who are equipped to handle caste issues recruit scst counselors so these kind of specific demands we have been asking very clearly so i didn't personally put it out here which is very not general to this discussion that's why i didn't say yeah yeah any other i have a question so you have nicely explained uh, ex uh, you know explained how subtle as well as explicit caste discrimination happens in educational institutions now all this is uh, easier to it's relatively easier to point out in case of uh, you know institutions which come under the purview of the union government or the state governments what about private institutions given that they are booming in such large numbers and also other educational spaces which do not fall under these guidelines and we, whatever we are talking about what are the what is the way to go ahead about that i can't see anything else but uh, that's why i asked this question that even private universities come under ugc if ugc can if the government if politicians can tighten the hold on our private universities they can do it there are enough set guidelines for the institutes to follow they are not following it i don't know and even there are some fears among us iit is constantly moving towards privatization regularly where btech programs right now in par with private university fees it's very costly to take that easily private btech and they are increasing fees of mtech also recently so inaccessibility is also coming in every other spaces now even through higher education funding agency in place even public education institutions are no more performing or behaving like they are public funded institution they have we have been openly told that we don't get enough funds we are going to recover our losses through your fees that's not how a public education institution functions we have been told that last semester when they increased the fees so inaccessibility is one thing i feel is a different issue in private space but other, like economically in some way inaccessibility to get into but other factors even after getting into social factors i don't think changes much and if that is the case then it has to be the social students and faculty themselves have to unite and question them not just question like are you are like protest protest that is one first do an introspection among yourself also who is doing what why can't you have an open discussion about these topics in your campus regularly so that you can know the space and by being that itself it can grow like more and more debate more and more chance of change is my hope hi uh, over here hi 
Uh, you talked about uh, students dropping out of college because they face caste discrimination. Uh, are there any studies which segregated uh, the dropout students based on their caste so that people can look at the numbers? Uh, with regards to IIT Bombay, we have got the data for both uh, BTECs as well as PhD students dropout data. BTEC it is very uh, BTEC is straightforward. We can say caste discrimination also plays a role, but academic pressure is so heavy in BTECs always put into place. With PhD, where very less PhD uh, ACST students itself come inside. I forgot to tell you, other than in interview there, they have one more weapon at hand in IIT Bombay. They have an have a qualifier exam which they use to eliminate people. It's essentially an eliminator exam. We constantly see that eliminator exam is used to remove marginalized students also. The problem with their dropout data is very vague. They are not putting us the reasons in their data. They just say date, roll number, which department, when they dropped out. So yes, category is there. By that we can uh, claim, but since the student number itself is very less, I'm saying in PhD admissions, as I showed you, only 1.64% of ST student itself is in the entire campus. Then only one ST student will drop out. It may feel, are 10 general category students are dropping out. Why are you claiming caste discrimination? Are you are not even taking them inside first. Even one student getting out is a huge problem. So those kind of statistical problems are there. That's why we are not putting out like a direct figures. But we know personally, uh, because before this SEST cell takes up cases, a lot of students usually mail us also to APPSC email ID when they are facing caste discrimination. We have helped few people to complain in the SEST cell, help them go through the process where we see that process is very bad and never going to get any justice for them. And we have seen students dropping out through that also. So that is there. It's there, but it may not be significant because the data itself is already skewed. Any more questions? Look, uh, so you've talked specifically about IIT Bombay. And uh, so I was wondering what is the situation in the other central and state university colleges or universities themselves? Because talking about student movements, I, uh, I mean, my opinion is that like uh, in IITs and all the other Institute of Eminences, they do not have a very active student body, but as uh, so if you see other central universities or, uh, or state universities, they do have active student bodies. So do they play sufficiently, sufficient enough role so as to you know, minimize such caste-based discrimination or what is the exact situation in those? Do you have any idea? So there is a hypothesis. There is a hypothesis. We are also coming into conclusion that if you know my state government, I belong to the Tamil Nadu. My state government universities have much more diversity than IITs way long back. And Mandal Commission implements OBC reservation very late. And that has been taken into IITs only after 2009. So we see a surge in many other political movements also happening after more marginalized students come into these spaces where their questions are being taken up. And this is, we are seeing as a trend. That's how first Ambedkar Peria study circle was started in IIT Madras long back. After that, IIT Bombay started in 2015. So these, one question you asked is, how is the caste discrimination or caste issues problem? How is it in various other IITs? Now, who are the student movements in various other IITs? We have collected data with all 23 IITs and uh, and of all the IAMs as well. We are starting the work for Central Education University. IAMs are in much worse space than IITs, I can clearly tell you in regards to implementation of reservation norms in PhD and postdoc, especially clearly in faculty positions. That's one thing. And uh, since there is no, not enough, this IIT Bombay, at least I'm saying, there is a somewhat existent and functioning running SEST student cell. Many, recently IIT Delhi implement SEST cell in their group. Many other IITs do not even have functioning SEST student cells to know their issues, take up those causes. So how do they also function is because not enough marginalized students are there in the place. So their problems are not taken up as an institutional problem. Their 
so their problems are not coming up in policies or setups or systems in the district so right now more and more such students are coming in we are starting to see a change abpsc iit bombay as i told it started in 2015 but after the pandemic we started surge in organizations social organization in various other iits iit gandhinagar iit delhi iit roorkee all have started their own abpscs and ascs and different other study circles whenever the fi ik program or such uh, schedule cast or recent iit madras had seen last two months may three suicides or constantly has been clearly said by the faculty harassment has happened against the student so we see that students are also coming up but more and more students we manage to get into the university their problems will become their problem unless it won't it, uh, i can't see a top down approach where ministry suddenly wakes up yeah we are going to do good every iit should follow that will solve a lot of problems that's true that's why we are working on a pil which will impact entire nation one way has to go through a legal process which can impact everyone but locally small small issues has to happen then their group their own student has to stand up take it up that is happening more thing will happen we are also working on coordinating other organizations in this place yeah uh, yeah hi hi so i have a question about the transparency in interviews that you are expecting so like uh, as you mentioned even in places like tamil nadu where interviews are being conducted for phd and all that the interviews are not transparent i believe but we don't see a drop out there right so i mean how do you expect transparency in interviews like what kind of transparency do you expect in interviews and no i told you a small thing these are uh, these are very basic things in order to have a fair you at least have a marginalized student marginalized faculty in the panel but you don't even have marginalized faculty enough in the camp campus how are you going to bridge that gap then you have to aggressively intake a lot more but this is a this is a systemic problem is there i understand but the uh, when at least you know that could bias happens give the less weightage to interview more weightage to a objective analysis where you can take 70% weightage to a written test and 30% only to interview where you can somehow like negate the effect of bias somehow i'm not sure and that is one and one more is very open and clear put a video camera in every interview panel let them all been recorded let's see at least if people behave that's one these are very few things i'm and none of them is like innovative you know this is very common sense kind of a solution please dishonorable way of doing it yeah. but when the student is asked for his rank in what are gre or tofel or what are, not tofel what are the examers why can't he just downgrade it by a factor of let's say 10 he is not honor bound or anything right he can say whatever he wants so why can't he just downgrade his downgrade his rank and that is the only way no no we are uh, we are somehow making the student asking them to live a different life in order to be normal the people will be people we won't change let them ha na that's not the solution right i'm saying i understand for the time being it may work for someone some person may feel guilty of lying also some person may be ha na this cannot be a solution i know a friend of mine who did that but huh? i know a friend of mine yeah i know a friend of mine who did uh, like downgrade his rank okay. like his rank was in uh, quite far away but he for the first two years he said that his rank is less but when it came out later that his rank he lied about his rank he faced the no no first of all no first of all first of all my problem is why does a marginalized student has to live with the burden itself of something about a some rank of some mark ha na he got a chance to be in the campus that is all you should think you please stop thinking about the rank of the other person because he is in your classroom he is equal if you start developing that first then you will stop asking them what his rank is and try to stereotype their ability based on that that's why people ask their right they are not just asking the rank also they are also after that trying to stereotype his mental ability academic ability based on that he may not perform well that's all coming up so i'm saying first of all 
you start treating people equal. Don't ask rank. Simple. That should be told to every general category students instead of asking marginalized student to lie. Clearly, don't go and ask rank man. Please, it's bad habit. Oh. Mike, Mike, please. Others can't kill. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. So I think with that discussion, we were also discussing yesterday that <laughs> giving a rank, giving this number to somebody's excellence is it's itself a sort of a default uh, thing because there are like we can't uh, like give number to someone's ability. I guess. I mean, uh, it should be there. Should be some cutoff. Like before, about this cutoff, everybody is qualified for interview, and then okay, and then there is an interview, and somehow like telling this rank to the student is somewhere for fault because because there is this inherent competition that is there in the society, and uh, like everybody wants to see oh, am I the first person? Am I the second? Oh, when I say uh, marks zada hai, he second now I am first. So this competitiveness is there, and everybody is trying to check that competitive competitiveness by asking the ranks. That I am better than him, just to, and also it gives some sort of fake confidence when when you pull put someone down at this undergrad level, because uh, getting through JE only is very tough, and that also adds up some sort of insecurity in the students, and that's why they are asking grants from the SC because they are like I have come here with so much hard work, and they they are coming from like lower rank, and they have not done the hard work so. That that comes from that insecurity that they have. So I think giving number only is a flawed thing. Not to give number, just yes. a cut off. I think even if they are not asking for rent, um, I can tell you from personal experience itself that. People find means if they actually want to know the cast. It's not just the ranks. No, that's why I told you my second data was people ask cast surname directly. It's it's like so if you ask directly, saying, or if you don't have surnames, just like in Tamil Nadu, like places like Tamil Nadu, you'll ask for the kind of food you eat, the kind of practices you do. And there are ways in the society to find cast. If you want to know, they will somehow do it. Yeah. So that is coming inside higher education space also. Yeah. I understand. It's very selection. Yeah, no, I just want to behave. I just want to point one thing when we are talking of ranks and how to evaluate ranks and something like that. It's not the students created the system, they are just part of the system, they go through it, they come out of it. IIT, that's why I am always talking about IIT, is also living off of it. This debate of merit versus reservation, why IIT themselves can come in front, like just Western countries coming in front and saying we will we are diverse. IIT could openly come and we are putting an end to this. They are starting to think at least in some way to stop this problem of rank. They are not doing it because they are living off of it that that ranks somehow give merit to them and that merit gives somehow brand to IITs. When AIR one, AIR ten people choose certain IITs, that IITs are also getting something out of it, right? It's it's vice versa. The system is also getting used to this idea of merit being pushed through this ranking system. That's why it is never even questioning itself to somehow reform the rank system. So I'm, I'm, I'm problem. That's why I'm saying it's IIT ka problem. It's higher education space ka problem. It's not the people problem. It's not the single individual. The system is in place to make sure where it is always put against reservation. So uh, I could even say simply that uh, don't even give a general rank to SCST candidate who gets into SCST category. Let them all get into AR1 because AR1 in SC category only gets into. So that also will somehow fade away and somehow everywhere always comes to a caste is place, will find a place to implement their caste. Only way to identify is to openly talk. I have a bias. I have a bias. I am understanding it. I have to introspect and change myself. Then I have to openly debate about it. So the unlearning will not happen because outside structure is somehow invisible, blind to it. Invisibilizing the caste will not solve the problem of caste. Openly attacking it through uh, problems. I am he is uh, dealing with me very unfairly. Then that has to be talked to the person also. 
I'm saying like that. So that's yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make a point. Like, yeah, uh, I understand this talk was about higher education places and applied casteism in there. I, from personal for, from personal experience, I think it's already a bit too late in higher education spaces. I mean, of course, we need to make the effort. We need to bring reform and all in everywhere, really. But I think it, a more targeted approach would be to start much earlier in schools. Like from, and that's just from personal experience, I'm saying. But yeah, just as an amendment to what you Yeah. Hi. Hi, sir. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to make a couple of points. Actually. Yes, sir. So uh, maybe we do know about many important anti-caste movements in India, uh, in Tamil Nadu, in Kerala and in Maharashtra, at least the ones I know. Uh, it may be a good idea, actually, that uh, a lot has been written about it. And uh, there are lots of good books about these things. But this is not part of popular reading. Uh, so one thing, you know, using this uh, social media that you mentioned, one can actually write simplified histories of these things. So that's one point. And the second point is uh, not only the histories of anti-caste movements, but the history of caste itself. It's approximately 2,000 years old in this country. And uh, it, we need to be educated also about it. And I think uh, student bodies doing it in institutions of higher learning can actually go a very long way because we just don't know a lot of things. I mean, I, I had many experiences I cannot really in public uh, talk about it uh, with uh, people who are in the present, uh, present political uh, power. So, a guy said that the caste of Muslims in India. What are you talking about? So, this is your history, this is my history. So, I think uh, a simplified, simplified means which has a long reach of histories is very important, I think, yes. for, uh, for, 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 you know, anti caste this movement. type of movements to really take yes. place. And uh, that's yes. all I want. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Very thank good you. talk. And Basically, we are Ambedkar Periyar Fule study circle. So that's what I didn't forget to mention. We do a lot of reading of all the anti caste books and regular basis ourselves. During pandemic, we could not because we were far away. After that, we started reading, we started engaging those things in our campus as well. Yeah. Final question. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, I have okay. a bit of a tangential question. Yeah. Uh, in the faculty allotment, you have shown general. Yeah, you are not being heard. Huh? Hello. Yeah. Just talking to Mike loudly. Huh? Hello. Yeah. Uh, the faculty allotment you showed, general category had almost 600 seats. Uh, I just want to understand uh, in within the general category, I'm expecting that whatever castes are there, there is no discrimination among them. Let, let's... Okay, suppose. Yeah, huh. suppose. Uh, and I just want to know what is the, within the general category, what is the caste based, maybe Kshatriya or uh, I mean, I just want to understand in higher education, it is a systematic issue, which is yeah. not allowing SCST students to, or faculty to come, or is it on a community level, there are few casts. I, I'm just talking about general. I'm not- no, I understand. I understand. Yeah. Oh, so I will clearly say we don't have data about it. I am, I didn't say what they told for the RTA data. They just said, we are not maintaining category information about any of the faculty. So they clearly said, we don't even know if they are general or SC or ST. RTA says like that. We are not part of the system to know every data also. We get through it through some legal measures like RTA, which is available to us. What you are asking is a caste census of higher education space of faculties, which I don't know if... Ha, I'm saying the caste census to know what category of upper caste they are. I don't have the information. I don't know if I can get to that information also because uh, that's not available to us. Maybe so far not. Yeah. Okay. Final question in the interest of time. Okay. You, you can ask a question. Final question. Uh, 
uh, apart from uh, reservation, what else can be uh, also like to two link questions? Or do we have any data of that is the reservation working as expected? And two, what else can we? What are the measures can we apart from the student movements? What are the measures can we include to uh, like despite me having this reservation for such a long time? Uh, like, I still have the same issue that uh, what else can we do about those? No, I'm saying if this is a simple uh, physical interaction, you could look at it like that. Till 2009 or for a long time, there are only majorly upper caste students and faculty in the space. SEST students started coming through reservation from the beginning of the reservation, but very less people get through it also. We could see that over the time, merit was always put in over 60s, 70s, 80s. There is an agenda Subramaniam has written about it, how merit varied. So even though the reservation was in place, as you said, from a long time, it was never implemented in full scale in IITs as a space. So more and more students come, now only interactions are happening. So collisions are happening. So these kind of things are coming out as an anomaly, a this, this, this. So I'm saying reservation is not the reservation is just putting them all together on a plane and then interact each other. We are seeing the problem which exists outside the society also. Right now, we are bringing them into the space also. It's, it's the common space. So, reservation is not created to eliminate the caste space question. The question is to put them all in the one place and interact and learn and unlearn. Everyone gets equal opportunity. So, uh, annihilation of caste is the solution. If annihilation of the caste has to happen, that's why I was all constantly talking. See through the society, through the lens of equality, liberty, and fraternity. When you address your friend or anyone, when you know you are maybe biased, always learn to accept that if a student comes from a 10,000 rank, I am a topper, I will always see. That's your learning. How to unlearn that is to see to him through these lenses. Am I really looking with the ideals of fraternity, him as an equal. No. Then am I wrong? How to change myself? When I don't even have the ideal in my mind that there should be fraternity to me, there should be equality to me, there should be a liberty to me. Those kind of ideals are never put in as the fundamental ideals to me in a life. Then the march will be very far off. So I'm saying we have to learn these ideals as a fundamental learning and other than that, other than introspecting and debating about it and unlearning and learning, there is no chance of suddenly caste going away by just putting more and more all caste people together in a place. That is the first part. After that, you may have to do this unlearning and learning. Both has to unlearn and learn. That has to happen. So, uh, I heard this point somewhere come in the discussion somewhere that could there, uh, like, I'm just asking whether what I'm going to say will work or not. Yeah, yeah. It's that when a bunch of students are coming into IIT, say, yeah. some of them are not performing as well as the performing in the usual sense of the word. Okay. Not as well as the high performance. So could there be like a one year or half a year kind of thing in which people can just stay in IIT, have their have their seat, but could learn the ropes. Yeah, yeah. So that they can bridge and come into that place. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, with this, I, I think I missed out in that castlessness, invisible caste point. One of the important point is how general is castless. This is a constant uh, debate we also see during many other students, which come out in internal committee when, when Darshan has not attended only one exam in his three months. He just missed one exam because of all these issues could be also he could miss an exam. Okay, they claim that he is academically poor. They claimed that already. This is the castlessness ka problem. When general category student didn't perform well, he is going through some other issue. If a scheduled cast performed this way, it's always because he is performing not well because through his JE rank, his reservation. That was JE rank was put out in the internal committee report to prove this point. I was like, so this always also is a problem. Like, and I and I more so also don't believe that this stereotype that the students don't perform well because they come through the situation. But when you start stereotyping them already through this, they are also put under such problems. One, what you said earlier was uh, uh, some sort of a helping 
mechanism where students are not performing well that you can open it for every student right, right. any student will not perform well in every exam but our problem itself comes because always schedule cast schedule prep student has to prove themselves more than any general category students because they have come through reservation also they have to perform more right because if they don't perform it's not because they are not weak alone their community the reservation whole thing will be put into place the general category student didn't perform it's not the entire ca he because belong to such and caste that's why he is not performing never comes right it's because he is having some problem he didn't understand so this puts a extra burden on students also i'm saying like that so when we have to understand or evaluate students on a plane we have to also think through what are we putting them into when you are putting in such a space uh, can like can we more. can we take further questions outside if you don't mind yeah. just right. so let's thank the speaker once thank again you. and for the for the for the informative talk and also the enlightening yeah. discussions thank you also to the audience so we'll see you next time for the next high talk yeah 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 please follow us everywhere we are more active in instagram <laughs>